Welcome. In this session, we would be discussing the Aeolian landforms. We have already talked about the glacial, fluvial, and the karst topographies. Now, Aeolian, as the name suggests, it is related to uh, desert. So you have all the features that deal with wind would be discussed here. Now, let's first understand the various types of deserts. Then we'll be talking about the processes that lead to Aeolian landforms, and finally. The two types of landforms, that's the erosional landforms and the depositional landforms. So, we'll start with the types of deserts. We can classify deserts into four types. I can say they can be subtropical, they can be polar, these can be continental and coastal. Now, some of these are very clear from the name itself. Polar are the uh, deserts that are found in cold areas. So, desert in the region of Siberia, Leh Ladakh would be a kind of polar desert. Then you have the subtropical desert, that's the most common desert, usually seen in the regions of mid latitude. So, you have the Kalahari Desert, the Sahara Desert. Then you have the continental deserts. Continental deserts are the deserts which are situated far inside the continent and they do not have any exposure like Gobi Desert. So, it's within the continental boundaries and finally the coastal deserts like Atacama Desert and, Kalahari, uh, and the Kalahari Desert you have towards the coastlines. So you have the deserts which are closer to the coastlines would be known as coastal deserts. Now when we start with understanding the wind movements there are three basic types of erosion of wind particles that take place. The first is deflation, abrasion and then you have attrition. Attrition we have already talked about in the glacial landforms also. So if I want to explain these very simply I can say if two particles rub against one another they are known as attrition. So these two particles when rub against each other they break into smaller particles and this is the process known as attrition. The next is abrasion. Under abrasion you have a particle which rubs along the surface and once it rubs along the surface it breaks down into smaller particles. So the basic difference between abrasion and attrition is attrition the particles rub against each other and under uh, abrasion the particle runs uh, rubs against or uh, are, are broken by the friction generated by the surface and then finally you have the deflation. So deflation is when the wind is blowing the blowing wind moves away the sand particles and when the wind moves away the sand particles these particles break down into smaller parts so they are known as deflation. So these three are the major wind processes that takes place which are responsible for erosional activities of uh, wind particles. The next is the transportational activity like those we have talked about under erosion similarly under transportation there is three types of transportation that we would be seeing. The first is suspension, then you have saltation and finally creeping. So if the particle is greater than 0.1 centimeter uh, or around uh, sorry 1 millimeter I would say it is creeping that means it would roll along the surface. The next is saltation if the particle size varies from 0.1 to 1 millimeter the process is of transportation is saltation that means it jumps across the surface. So this is the surface you can see and the particle tends to jump and then jump another part. So that is the motion of saltation if the particle size is smaller and finally you have suspension if the particle size is less than 0 0.01 millimeter then it moves along with the wind and goes to the next place. So that is what is suspension that means it suspends in the air and moves. So these are the three uh, processes of transportation and these three processes of transportation are usually governed by the size of the particle or I can say the particle size. So size is very important parameter when we talk about the transportation. Now we have understood the various types of desert, the erosional uh, factors that affect wind particles and the transportational factors. So we'll start with the landforms now. Now under landforms as we have done for the remaining topics similarly we'll be doing here. We'll be first classifying the erosional landforms and then we'll be moving on to the depositional landforms. 
The first erosional landform that we would be discussing today is known as deflation hollows or deflation basin. As we talked about deflation, the process itself suggests with the movement of the air, the wind particles move out. So consider this to be a surface before deflation hollow was created. So you had the sand particles that were present here. Now this arrow indicates the wind direction. So this is the way the wind is blowing. And once the wind is blowing, it erodes away or moves out the smaller and lighter wind particles creating a kind of hollow or basin area in this region. And this hollow or basin is known as deflation hollow or deflation basin. It's usually seen in most of the uh, uh, deserts where the particle size is smaller. The next is mushroom rocks. Mushroom rocks are also known as rock stands or pedestals. Now the basic thing to understand here is this feature if you see it in a desert topography this feature is mainly attributed to differential erosion. Now most of the processes that we would see or most of the erosional landforms that we will be discussing further are result of differential erosion. Differential erosion as we have already discussed we will be uh, referring to it once again classifies that the rocks are arranged say in the fashion of hard rock soft rock so what happens is the soft rocks erodes at a much higher pace as compared to hard rock so if the erosion of hard rock is this the erosion of soft rock would be this and so on so based on the arrangement there can be various patterns that you can see in the desert topography in this case the lower portion is made up of soft rock and this portion is made up of hard rock and you have erosion across the soft rock that has taken place at a much higher rate as compared to the hard rock. So you can see a structure that is formed and this structure is of the shape of mushroom. It's commonly seen in Sahara deserts and in Sahara it is known as Gore. That's the local name of the mushroom rocks in Sahara desert. The next is Inselbergs. This is the Inselberg, one of the most famous Inselbergs which is known as Red Rock in Australia. So commonly seen in Australia and Nigeria, these are kind of residual hills or residual molds you can say which can be seen in the desert areas and these are known as inselbergs. Inselbergs can be of dome shaped or some other shape based on the, uh, the type of rock that exists there. They are also known as monad rocks. That's another name for inselbergs. Now inselbergs can be further classified into three types. The first is bond hearts. These are kind of uh, rocks which are dome shaped. The next is known as the knoll or the block. These are uh, conical in shape. These are dome shaped similar to this. And then finally you have the castle hoppies. And these castle hoppies are much in the shape of castle, so they are uh, kind of uh, distributed much more evenly. So these are the three types of Inselberg rocks that we have seen and overall uh, it's a kind of residual hill that can be seen. Now demosils, demosils are also known as earth pillars or hoodoos. So the another name for demosils is earth pillar and hoodoos and the basic characteristics is again similar to mushroom rock. You have a huge portion that is of a soft rock and above it you have a hard rock and this seems to be kept as if it is kind of imbalanced. It is also known as hoodoos or earth pillars. So they appear as pillars on the earth surface. So that's a common uh, kind of feature of desert topography. The next is Mesa and Butte. Mesa and Butte is one of the most popularly seen uh, features. Mesas are kind of rocks that are eroded during the course of time and if the mesa rocks are eroded at a very higher pace, the residual region is known as butte. So if mesa erodes at a very high rate, it forms butte. So I can say this is a kind of newer uh, landform and this is a kind of older landform that can be seen in the desert area. Uh, Mesa and Butte are usually result of hard rocks that withstand the erosional activities 
and the remaining region which is the soft drop erodes away so this is the mesa and this is the butte the next is zhujiang and yardangs now a lot of students get confused between what is zhujiang and what is yardang both are one and the same thing except the kind of arrangement that we discuss so under zhujiang you have a horizontal arrangement of hard rock and soft rock so you have soft rock hard rock and soft rock so this top mode soft rock would erode and there would be a kind of differential erosion that would take place and this is what is uh, what features is is zhujiang now similar to zhujiang you have yardangs however under yardangs the arrangement is vertical so you have hard rock soft rock hard rock soft rock the erosion would take place along the soft rock regions so this is the feature that is formed and this feature is what is yardangs and this feature is what is zhujiangs so that's the basic difference between yardangs and zhujiangs a lot of students get confused commonly so the best way to remember is yardangs is vertical while zhujiang is horizontal in nature the next is stone lattice as you can see in this diagram here you have a kind of lattice structure that is seen so when the wind is blowing through this region what is happening it creates a kind of net and the center region erodes away so you have these regions for example which would erode out and the remaining structure would appear as if there is a mesh net so the center regions would erode out and the remaining region would remain intact as you can see you have this region that is intact and the center circular region that is eroded away so that is what is structure of stone lattice it is kind of pitted and usually found in uh, a kind of huge rock which has uh, more probability for differential erosion the next is ventifacts and derricanters derricanters and ventifacts are the kind of rocks that remain in the region of desert after the wind erosion has taken place so a, a derricanter would be a three faceted rock while ventifacts would be a two faceted rock so as you can see this is an image of derricanter you have one two and three faces that you can see of this rock here the next is wind bridge and wind windows so as you can see here this diagram is from the arches and the uh, canyon lands national park in united states so you can see here you have a bridge that is formed and this is a window that opens towards the sky so you have two bridges i could say three bridges that are formed so this is one bridge this is another bridge and this is another bridge so you have three bridges that are opening and from the bridge you have an opening which is towards the sky side or towards the horizon and that is known as window so you have one structure which is bridge you have another structure on the back side which are bridges and all these open out into the uh, skyline so that is what is known as window so this region opens out into the skyline and this is the window however this structure that you can see is the bridge it's commonly seen again due to result of differential erosion in the region and it's one of the rarely seen uh, desert phenomena which you find in uh, very few of the deserts the next is leg deposits and desert pavements these are uh, deposits or loose fragments you can see which lie on the desert surface most of the deserts are made up of finer particles however there are some deserts which have bigger size particles that you can see and those remain after the erosion activity has taken place those are also known as lag deposits or they create a kind of pavement in the desert region so they are known as desert pavements the next is castellated chimney castellated chimney is a modification of yardang so we have seen yardang as vertical arrangement of hard rock and soft rock so that is a kind of arrangement that you see and under zhujiang just to repeat you have hard rock soft rock hard rock soft rock a kind of horizontal arrangement so yardang when it erodes under very high uh, impact by a kind of rainfall or some activity it remain there remains a kind of needle shaped structure and this needle shaped structure isolated within the region is known as castellated chimney that's another a very unique phenomena of desert landforms 
it's not a very commonly seen phenomena the next are grooves and hamada grooves are small kind of uh, striations that are seen and commonly found in most of the areas then you have hamada hamada is a kind of uh, region where you have uh, which is exposed to kind of sand blast and you have regions of rocks that could be seen so these were some of the erosional landforms now next move on to depositional landforms and the depositional landforms the most common depositional landform is loess loess is a kind of yellow dust that can be seen in most of the deserts commonly seen in gobi desert and deserts around the region of china you call it loess and that's the yellow dust or the kind of golden dust that flows onto the surface which is known as loess the next is ripples now ripples are kind of small movements that are generated into the region and these are small movements create kind of waves on the surface of the uh, the desert region if the ripples are straight and they move in one direction they are known as straight ripples if they are kind of bit wavy but unidirectional in nature they move in this fashion and they are known as sinus swap, uh, sinus ripples the next is quaternary ripples quaternary ripples are similar to sinus ripples they are wavy in nature but they appear like a repeated w shaped pattern so you have a kind of w shaped pattern that you can see here and that is what is quaternary ripples those these all as these all are seen as a result of depositional activity of the blowing wind the next is lingoid deposits and lunate deposits there is a minor difference between lingoid and lunate under lingoid the uh, the lee side so you have the wind blowing and this is the windward side and this is the leeward side we also call the windward side as the stoss side under lignoid the leeward side which is the side uh, on which there is less impact of the wind appears to be curved however under lunate you have the stoss side or the windward side which is curved so it's a kind of i could say opposite to what is lignoid uh lunate is opposite to what is lingoid lunate is usually crescent shape of the shape of lunar phenomena however under lingoid you have a uh, lee side which is curved and under lunate you have the stoss side or the windward side which is which is curved so these are the two kind of uh, different ripple patterns uh, although the remaining features remain same is just the curved side which differs under lingoid and lunate so this is what is ripples the next is sand dunes so as i mentioned you have the two sides of sand dunes the leeward side and the windward side the windward side is also known as the stoss side while the leeward side is known as the apron side and here you can see you have the slip face of the leeward side so it drops off suddenly and this is known as the slip face the bottom of this is known as the toe however the top of the slip face is known as cornice and the point where it breaks off or it starts to fall is known as brink so this is the cross section of the sand dune so this is one way we can explain the sand dunes cross section the another way is the direction from which the wind is blowing the stoss side is known as the top set bed the bottom is known as the bottom set beds because it always remains towards the bottom side however there is another side which is the leeward side and this side is known as the four set bed so you have the top set bed four set bed and the bottom set beds and then from the uh, four set bed you have the angle at which it is moving downwards and that angle or the, of the slip face is known as angle of repose this is similar to what what we have studied under folds and falls so this is how we understand the pattern of sand dunes now as you can see you have the movement of sand dunes here which is visible so as the wind blows it goes into a certain direction and if the wind is blowing from this side it would be moving towards this side so this is what is the pattern of sand dunes so once the sand dunes move you have the eroded surface here and the same starts to deposit here the amount that is being eroded from here from the leeward side it starts to deposit on the windward side so you this was the original landform or the sand dune and when the erosional activity started this was the amount of sand that was carried away and this amount of sand 
started to deposit here so towards the leeward side it would start to deposit and from the windward side it would start to erode and this is how the sand dune movements takes place now there are numerous patterns of sand dunes that we can understand the most important thing is it is based on three major parameters the amount of vegetation the amount of wind flow and the amount of sand that is present if there is lot of vegetation that is present there would be no sand dunes or absent sand sand dunes would be absent if the wind is wind is very strong but there is very less amount of sand it would be longitudinal sand dunes however if there is a huge amount of sand with little wind and no vegetation it would be transverse sand dunes in between those would lie the crescent star and the parabolic sand dunes now let's move on to the individual classification for sand dunes the first we would be talking about is the linear sand dune linear sand dune is the most common sand dune uh, it's a kind of formation due to converging winds the next is dome shaped sand dunes sand dunes those are either dome shaped or elliptical in nature i could say then you have the reversing sand dunes reversing sand dunes lie between the star sand dune and the barkan sand dunes so you have reversing sand dunes that lie between star sand dunes and barkans then you have the next which is known as the star sand dunes itself and as star sand dunes what is happening you have wind blowing from multiple directions and there is a kind of formation of a star as you can see here so that's how it looks like so that's the pattern of the sand dune formation which is a star shape it is also known as a kind of pyramidal sand dune because you have the impact of wind from all sides that can be seen the next is sieff sieff is a kind of long and asymmetric asymmetrical sand dunes and it's a smaller form of longitudinal sand dunes longitudinal sand dunes usually run parallel to the wind direction so you have the wind direction and the sand dunes would be arranged parallel to the wind direction a smaller form of uh, longitudinal sand dunes are known as sieff so that's one thing the next is transverse sand dunes transverse sand dunes as we saw appear in the region where there is lots of sand so for transverse sand dune sand dunes sand is a primary condition you need a lot of sand for sand, transverse sand dunes and when these barkans merge it forms a transverse sand dunes and transverse sand dunes appear at 90 degree to the wind direction so they cut the wind direction perfectly and they appear only if the sand supply is very huge the next is parabolic uh parabolic sand dunes parabolic sand dunes you have the open wind side that is cut off so you have the curve towards the windward side so this is the direction of the wind that is blowing and you have a kind of depression towards the windward side and not towards the leeward side parabolic sand dunes are primarily seen in the region where there is vegetation activities and these vegetation activity or some other things which act as obstacle create parabolic sand dunes so parabolic sand dunes can be seen only in the region where you have uh, a kind of uh, vegetation activity constant wind supply and constant water supply the next is barachnoids barachnoids are smaller forms of barkans as you can see they they are found in the region of limited sand supply uh, where you have flat grounds and you have a wind flow that is unidirectional so you have unidirectional wind flow in either cases however in a star topography you have a kind of multidirectional wind flow that is seen in barachnoids and barkans you have unidirectional wind supply then uh, the leeward side is convex and the uh, sorry the windward side is convex and the leeward side is concave and it is steeper so this side is steeper which is leeward side is steep and concave however the windward side is gentle and convex so that is how we try to understand the barkans and the barachnoids if there are smaller barkans we call those as barachnoids so with this we cover uh, the basic erosional and the depositional landforms and the basic features of the aeolian landforms we would be covering few more topics that remain in the topic of geomorphology in the further sessions you can subscribe to our channel for any further updates have a good day ahead